Hi, and welcome back to Hands-on Infrastructure Automation with Terraform on AWS by Pack Publishing. In this section, we will continue to lay out the foundations of infrastructure automation with Terraform. We will learn how to make our configuration more flexible with variables and string interpolation. We will cover the workflow for local development and explore the ways you can manage Terraform state. And of course, we will modify and delete the resources that we have created earlier. We now know enough to create simple yet useful configurations in Terraform, but so far we have been hard coding all parameters. To make our configurations more flexible and reusable, we need to parameterize them. This will allow us to separate values that are going to change from deployment to deployment. It will also help to keep the code dry, and just as a quick reminder, dry stands for don't repeat yourself, and is a software engineering principle aimed at reducing repetition of the same data. We can parameterize Terraform configuration with the help of input variables. Let's open up our S3 project that we created in the previous section and have a play with variables. Let's open up our S3 project that we created in the previous section and have a play with variables. We'll start by creating a new file named variables.tf in our configuration folder. This file can be named anything you like, as Terraform automatically loads all .tf files in the current directory. But by convention, input variables are usually grouped in a file named variables.tf. This is a quite common design pattern in Terraform, which allows to quickly locate all variables that are used in a configuration. To declare a variable, all you have to do is to use the variable keyword, then give it some name, and then an empty block. This block can contain three parameters, all of them optional. A default value is the value that will be used if you don't override it. I'll just copy the value that we had coded previously. A description documents the intent of this variable. It's a good practice to make our code self-documenting, so I will quickly add a description here. In this case, it's a bit redundant, but as our configuration grows in complexity, this can come in handy later on. And then there is a type of the variable. If you don't specify this explicitly, Terraform will try to guess it based on the default value. And if there is no default, Terraform will assume that it's a string. In general, string is the most common type. What's a little bit confusing, though, is that it is used to represent not only strings, but also numbers and booleans. Terraform performs automatic conversion from string values to numeric and boolean values based on context. So in practice, string variables may be used to set arguments of any primitive type. We can also use primitive type directly. For example, if I type a number or a boolean here, it is still valid HCL, but under the hood Terraform will convert this value to string. And in fact, there are some caveats for boolean values specifically, and the official recommendation at the time when I'm recording this video is to always use strings instead. Next, we have maps. A map is a lookup table from string keys to string values. Here's how it looks like. Maps are useful for selecting a value based on some other provided value, or in some cases we can use the whole map value as an argument, like in this example. And lastly, we have lists. A list value is an ordered sequence of strings indexed by integers starting with zero. By the way, notice how I follow a certain naming convention when I'm declaring the variables. Having a naming scheme for your variables is really important. Terraform configurations can get very complex, and having a well-defined style can make them easier to follow. Here I'm using the snake case. I'm separating the elements in the variable name with underscores. This mirrors the resource type names, and it makes it easier to treat resource name as a single element in my text editor. For example, if I press Ctrl D, the whole variable name is selected. If you don't like the snake case, feel free to use something else. The main point here is to keep a consistent naming convention, not how this convention looks like. Ok, we have declared our variables, but to use a variable we also need to assign a value to it. In many cases the value only becomes known at runtime, so we can't set a default. Let me comment out one of the defaults to simulate this. Alright, how do we assign this value now? As usual, there are several ways to do this. Alright, how do we assign this value now? As usual, there are several ways to do this. First off, we can simply run Terraform plan. And Terraform will prompt us for values. These values are not saved, however, and the next time you run a command, you'll have to type in the values again. This gets old pretty fast. Another way is to set the variables directly on the command line with the var flag. Here is how it looks like. 
we will need to set this flag for each individual variable, so in our case the full invocation will look something like this. Once again, the variables are not saved, so we need to input them repeatedly for each command that we run. Probably not something I'd want to be doing all the time. We could also use environment variables. Terraform would read all environment variables with the prefix f underscore var and then the name of the variable. This won't save the variable, similar to a command line flag, but I can export it and then reuse for the duration of my session. This can be useful occasionally. For example, you might consider passing secrets this way, although there are better ways to deal with secrets, which we'll cover in a future module. But in most cases, it would make sense to store the parameters somewhere, so we don't have to set them on each Terraform invocation. One way is to set a default value in the variable block, as we've seen earlier. One way is to set a default value in the variable block, as we've seen earlier. Another way is to gather these variables in a variable definition files, which should have TFWARS extension. Terraform will automatically load all files which match Terraform TFWARS or auto TFWARS from the current directory and use them to populate the required parameters. Let me create a Terraform TFWARS file. And now add a variable to it. Now let me open up the integrated terminal to get a fresh session. If I run Terraform plan now, I am now longer prompted for this value, as Terraform has loaded this file automatically. You can also have multiple TFWARS files and pass them explicitly to Terraform using the var file flag. If you pass several files, Terraform will merge their values, and if a particular variable is defined in more than one variable file, the last value specified wins. This can be quite powerful, and we'll use this method to separate different environments in a future section. Alright, we have declared and assigned some variables. Now, how do we actually use them? To do this, we will have to use string interpolation. After a string is interpolated, all placeholders are replaced by their values. This is how interpolation looks like in the current version, which is point 11 when I'm recording this video. The interpolated value is put inside the curly braces and prefixed with a dollar sign, like this. But this is a string, and as such it has to be enclosed in double quotes. This is a syntax which we'll see a lot in this course, as it's used not only for variables, but also for built-in functions, and Terraform has dozens of useful built-in functions. The next version of Terraform, which was announced a couple of weeks ago, will support first-class expressions, and they simplify this quite a bit. It's not available yet though, so in this course I will have to stick to string interpolations. Ok, let's jump back to the editor and see how we can use our variables. Here I will replace the hard-coded name of our bucket with S3 bucket name parameter, which is a string. Next, I will add some tags. This attribute accepts a map, and I could simply pass our S3 tags map variable. But to keep things interesting, let's get just one value out of this map. I will use a built-in lookup function to do this. Notice that Terraform is quite happy with having double quotes nested inside another pair of double quotes. Notice that Terraform is quite happy with having double quotes nested inside another pair of double quotes. And for the last one, let's get a value out of our list. Lists are zero indexed, so let's fetch the first value and set a region of our bucket. Now let's run Terraform plan and see what happens. And now let's apply this. Looks like it worked. But before I wrap up this video, I'd like to introduce another command, which can be helpful when you're working with interpolations and built-in functions. Many programming languages such as Python or Ruby provide an interactive console as a quick way to try out commands and test pieces of code on the fly. Terraform also has an interactive console. Inside the console, we don't have to use quotation marks or the dollar sign. So if I want to access a value of a variable, I can do it like this. And if I want to give this map a key and get a value back, I can either use the lookup function, which I mentioned earlier, or do it directly with square brackets, like it's done in many programming languages. Unfortunately, this console is a bit limited in functionality. It doesn't support history or tab completion, and everything is evaluated immediately, so I can't declare a new variable. This will hopefully be fixed. This will hopefully get fixed in a future release, but even in the current form, Terraform Console is a useful tool for automation scripts, as it allows you to access arbitrary attributes from a Terraform configuration.
Alright, that's enough of variables and interpolations for now. We will see plenty more in the future.